Welcome to Trial Site News Podcast Series. This episode is a special edition where we had a chance to sit down with Chris Guccione, a musician and resident of New Orleans who has been under self quarantine for some time now because of the virus COVID 19. Trial Site News focuses on clinical research with an emphasis on actual clinical trials. The COVID-19 virus has obviously got us focusing and learning about this emerging pandemic. Now, Based on our research, we have uncovered that the U.S. coronavirus testing infrastructure unfortunately has not been as ready as any of us would have liked. Now, Unfortunately, this is impacting people all over the country that don't have access to tests. This is in contrast to countries such as China, South Korea, and Germany, where testing seems to be more pervasive and methodical. Now, we are grateful that you are willing to join us uh, on Trial Site News today, Chris, and to share more about your experience thus far with the health system and the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. So, Chris, welcome. Hey, thank you. You uh, said my name in New Orleans correctly, so we're, we're off to a great start. <laughs> we, we, we do what we can here at Trial Site News. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's jump right into this thing. Um, and our, our audience would appreciate if you could share more about your recent experiences. What was the situation, and why did you have to deal with the health system in Louisiana to begin with? Sure. So my son had been showing some of the uh, some of the symptoms of of Corona, and I want to say this was last Friday. So about two nights we went. He was wheezing. Uh, running a really low fever, not not high. His highest got to about 100.6 on the Saturday morning that we ended up bringing him. Mm. Um, but yeah, he was showing all the signs, sort of shortness of breath, mild fever, coughing pretty much all day. So sort of like general respiratory distress. So being that my wife was is about eight months pregnant and I play music around people of lots of different age groups. So I was concerned for him and I was concerned for all of us that we could either be carriers affecting others or he had it and we were dealing with it ourselves. So I brought him to uh, an after hours clinic. Our doctor was um, not there on a Saturday, so we did an after hours clinic. Right. And yeah, we uh, brought him over there and basically nothing was brought up about the virus which I expect at some level is just because they don't want people to panic. You know, they sort of were trying to kind of keep it under wraps. But I mentioned it somewhere around the middle because from everything that we've been hearing on the news and everything else, he was showing all the signs. So I brought it up and I said, is there any way we could get a test for Corona or how is how does that work? How are the tests for Corona working? And uh, the doctor just simply said, have you been around anyone with Corona, with the coronavirus? And I said, I'm not really sure you know i don't believe so but i'm not really sure and really at the time from what we've seen since no one was getting the test so no we had no idea i don't think anyone really had any idea right well let me let me jump in there then well can you can you elaborate on the reasons they gave you for not doing tests on you and you as you mentioned your wife is eight months pregnant did they give a specific reason why considering the potential risk so what they said was, so I guess when that, that first question, I got that answer back. So I sort of sat with that for a minute and, you know, she kept going on with the exam. And then at the end, I asked again, I said, is there, should we be looking into the test? Is this something, it seems like he is showing some of the, some of the symptoms. And um, she was also aware that my wife was, was pregnant. I don't think she knew she was eight months pregnant, but she knew that she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, he's not, he's not a high risk member at this time. You know, it seems that this virus is affecting the elderly and those with, that are immunocompromised. And so since he wasn't in that, he wasn't considered to be in that group that it wasn't necessary. And that bothered me, <laughs> but I guess at the time, you know, there are still some people there waiting and I didn't really want to cause too much of a fuss. But at the at that moment, I was like, this this looks messy. This just seems messy. If he's showing all the signs, yes, I realize that it doesn't seem like kids are being affected yet, but he can very easily be a carrier, and we just don't know where to go from here. Uh, it seems like an irresponsible way to approach it because no one knows. You know, it just leaves everyone in the in a lurch. Like, should we quarantine? Should we not? Should we? You know, so with way more questions than I had before. Right. So 
So then can you tell us, not being tested, what this meant then for you as far as quarantine and your job and your financial possible implications? What did you do then? Right, right. That's a good question. So I ended up that day I had already missed uh, missed my gig because I was at the um, at the clinic with my son. So I had had a gig that day that I had to find a sub for. You know, understandably, band leaders are like, hey, you're taking care of your son. You know, I get it. But, you know, that's still money that I was missed out on. But then the next day, this is before we had any type of any type of shutdowns in New Orleans, or I guess the city of Louisiana was all at once. I was still concerned as to whether whether he had it, whether I had it. And so because I wanted to sort of be on the safe side of it, and I knew the venue that I was going to play later that night was relatively everything's kind of close, you know, it's a, not a huge venue, but it's also not too small, but, but everyone's, everyone's close. And even like, you know, like the trumpet player in the band has really bad asthma and things. So I felt like it would probably be kind of irresponsible on my part to, to not know and to just go and play. So I decided not to play that night also. And so uh, just, you know, out of sheer, not knowing it affected at least two gigs there because then there were uh, church that morning also. I played at a church and uh, it's mostly an older um, congregation. So I felt that that would be irresponsible too. So that's two gigs right there that just in, in case, you know, not knowing, self-quarantining, I guess you could call it, um, I, I decided not to, not to play. Hmm. So why do you think it's so important for there to be testing done for those who show symptoms, not just the elderly and chronic disease or heart and respiratory condition patients? Sure. I think the main reason is just everyone can be a carrier. You know, no matter what, no matter what group you're in, everyone can be a carrier. And if you don't know, you don't know the correct way to act. You know, should we, that's, and that was sort of where we were. You know, it puts the responsibility on the patient. Should I self quarantine? Am I okay? You know, I'm, I'm a musician for a living. So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm not raking in the the huge money. So sort of every gig counts, um, especially with a child and one on the way, we're trying to make our money go as far as it can, if you know what I mean. So, um, so yeah, it just the reality of not knowing just having no more questions answered than from when we got there it seemed like an irresponsible way for people to be dealing with that situation and i don't blame the doctors you know i I, i'm i imagine there was some either you know they were told not to really bring it up because it may make you know for more panic or they just didn't have the tests available and so they'd rather not even go there because they have no testing available. And that's, like I said, that's also not their fault, but it's tough. You know, it's tough not having someone say, look, we're not quite sure, but just self quarantine for 14 days, you know, okay, thanks doc. Or yeah, he's shown a few signs, but this would be, you know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Just having a definitive answer at some level would have made it much, much easier. And even, you know, through this last week, they started sort of shutting down the clubs in the area. And so gigs were canceled and this and that. Right. But even still knowing how to respond to the situation, can I be around my parents that are, you know, in their 70s or should we just stay away? So mostly sided on, especially once they started having the government mandates through the state, you know, we've been way more just we basically just stay in the house. You know, we, we take a walk every day around the neighborhood, a few other little things, but we're really basically staying uh, completely to ourselves. So so moving on then, what would you like to see moving forward? Your ideas and suggestions based on what you have seen and experienced are important, and we'd like to get your input on it. Sure. I guess it really just comes down to lack of information. When you can sort of see the numbers a couple of weeks out when there have been other examples in other countries, and you can sort of see where this could head, I think... Here in the United States, we have this sort of invincibility cloak we feel like we have on sometimes. And I think we sort of, and, and, you know, there were other countries that 
were in very similar situations. I think it hit very quickly. Sort of everyone was at a loss. But I guess just having more information, more, a little more decisiveness and a little more certainty from top to bottom, I think could have at least maybe quelled a little bit of the, the panic. Because, you know, the, it felt like the responsibility was on me. Should I self-quarantine? Is he sick? Is he not? Can I go play? Should I just not even be around another person? You know, and I don't know if it was the same all around the country, but definitely it seemed like in our region with either just lack of the testing kits and whatever else, there was just not, there was such a sort of nonchalance about it. And I was watching a conference today. Louisiana has the fastest growing infection rate in the world right now. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty yeah. crazy. It's pretty wild. And I guess I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? I guess that's sort of the sad thing is uh, I'm not surprised. By the way that it seemed to be dealt with, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, we, we hope for the best for Louisiana. And uh, we'll, we'll obviously be keeping an eye on how things progress over there. Well, Chris, we really appreciate your time. We're grateful and certainly will carry the message forward in our mission to make the healthcare system more responsive and clinical research more transparent and, ex- and accessible. So, uh, Chris, thanks again for joining us today. Hey, I really appreciate you. Sure, anytime. Yeah.